You know, I hate talking about amateur prospects. That's unprofessional. But here, B-Bar is going to do some real beautiful things. I mean, early in the fight, this is just the beginning of the fight here. To start the fight, he's going to check his timing. He's going to check his timing intentionally, early. Check his timing. His opponent says, you know what? I'm a big guy. I'm going to try to get tall on you. B-Bar says, chill with that. Let me go bigger than you are. I'm going to go taller than you are with my hands. That's going to allow me to see, think, and decide. I could catch your jab. Okay, that's going to force you to rhythm step. You got a habit of rhythm stepping. You got a habit. I don't even got to faint you yet. I don't even got to faint you yet to force you to rhythm step. You got a habit anyway, and you'll do, do, do stuff like that just off of me catching a jab. So once you do that, I'll just hit you with a jab, touch you with a jab, live the fight another day. That's a good way to start the fight. Let's see what else B-Bar's got for us. Mm-mm-mm. Here's a sit-down faint. B-Bar's, mm. So B-Bar's here. He's going to change the temperature real quick. He's going to sit down, faint, change his height. Then he's going to get up bigger than his opponent. He's going to get up bigger than his opponent. And he says, cool, I'm going to disengage. I'm going to respect that man. Or for respecting that man, it's going to allow me to shoot the jab because you got so much space to cover to get in here. I'm, I, I got so much time here to make a decision. I make a decision to jab. Oh, my goodness. B-Bar's here deep in his back here. He's going to check his timing right here. Boom, check his timing. Or for that check his timing, he says, you know what? I got a deep bag. I'm going to defend against your hook. And I'm going to rip you to the body. I mean, that's just a real good decision right there for amateur. Oh, my goodness here. Now, they people be disrespecting uh, Mexicans, talking about some Mexican style, making it like it's a brawling style. But let me tell you, B-Bars here enters Marquez. He enters Marquez. You know, first of all, Mexicans have a real rich tradition and history of boxing. B-Bars is going to enter Marquez. I'm going to repeat that. He's going to check his time and right there, boom. Then he's going to enter Marquez. Uh, that's the playbook. Marquez, okay? Off of Marquez, his opponent got no choice but to react as if the body shot or the hook's coming in. And, of course, like I said, the opponent's got a habit. Every, even your next opponent's got a habit. They're going to be rhythm stepping. So that's going to give B-Bars time to see, think, and decide. You see the confidence and the posture from here. He's able to use his eyes and decide what he wants to do next. Now, the opponent has to start from so far away. He didn't got outsmarted, so he's going to want to do something. He's got a little bit of ego. He says, I'm going to jump him with the hook. And once again, block the hook right, right to the body. That's beautiful work from B-Bars. Let's continue to watch. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Here, B-Bars says, cool, listen, I missed the punch, but that's all right. I missed the punch, but that's all right. You want to smother me? Okay, cool. I'm not going backwards. I'm not going backwards so you can land punches. I'm going to let you smother me. I'm a Floyd Mayweather fan. So being a fan of Floyd Mayweather, being a student of Floyd Mayweather, I know that one of his best defenses, defense number one, is not to allow your opponents to strike. So I'm going to let you smother yourself, a la Ricky Hatton, Floyd Mayweather. You're going to go ahead and smother yourself. You're going to eat shoulder and forearm. The referee not saying nothing because this is boxing. And then I'm going to tap you on the back, do the referee's job for him, tap you on the back and say, listen, bro, we in a clinch. Chill out. Um, let's go ahead and break. And I'm not going to let you get funny on a break with me. I'm not going to let you punch me on a break. I'm going to go ahead and get some controls out there. I'm going to control your arm right here. Sensitivity and trapping. And control you. Make sure I live to fight another day. Let's continue. Mm, 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 mm. Now, it appears to me that B-Bars didn't get the memo that controls are not allowed in amateur boxing. Apparently, a lot of people don't got that memo, but B-Bars didn't get the memo. Here, B-Bars is going to go to a control package. Control package. To throw a punch, doesn't land the way he wants it. His opponent goes to smother him. He says, cool, you want to smother me? First of all, after the punch, I got to check my timing anyway. I got to check my timing anyway. But after the punch, you want to smother me? Okay, cool. Let me go ahead and get my hands on your head and on the side of your head here by your ear. Control the situation. Ref's not saying nothing. This is boxing. Uh, we don't know what the myths are about, but the ref's not saying nothing. He lives to fight another day. Let's keep going with B-Bars. He's nice with it. Oh, he's also able to defend two punches. Why he's able to see them punches? Because he took the time to throw some controls on them. So even if the, the left hand gets through a little bit, he's able to somehow get his hand up there and take some steam off of that punch, all because of the responsibility of after I throw punches, I got to get my hands on you. Great stuff for B-Bars. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. B-Bar is deep in his bag there, deep in his bag there, just elite level striking here. Um, so B-Bar's here. He's going to throw the jab to the gloves. I'm going to repeat, B-Bar throws the jab to the gloves. He'll take that. He'll take that level of control. He's going to jab the gloves. I repeat, he's going to jab the gloves. From there, he's going to go to a Marquez feint deep, make his opponent bend down, break his base. From there, B-Bar said, you know, I'm going to touch you with the jab. I don't need to throw a power jab right here. Also, don't need to step in. I don't need the automatic step in with your jab. Something nice out on the I don't need that jab right now. I'm going to go ahead and pop your head with the jab since you're looking down. I'm going to turn my fist and turn that into an uppercut. Very East European style. That's very nice. 
Okay, from there, he stays on the Marquez side. He keeps that position. His opponent's leaning that position anyway. He's going to take that opportunity to swim under and throw a right uppercut. That's nice, taking what's available, punch selection. He's not just throwing punches, just to throw them. And notice he ain't even putting no steam on these punches. Let me give you these real time. There's not even no steam on these. Uh, uh. And then from there, you're going to smother me? Cool, smother yourself. Smother yourself. Again, a la Floyd Mayweather, smother yourself. But this time, I'm going to bump you off of me. Get off of me, Okay. Get off of me, and I'm going to go to the Marquez side again, change head slots again, throw my uppercut again, and then once again, sensitivity and trapping. You want to stay in that high guard? No problem. I'm going to lock your hands up. Defense number one, you're not allowed to strike. You're not allowed to strike. From there, his opponent tries to posture off. B-Bar says, listen, I know you want to throw a punch here. Let me go ahead and block that hook, control you with my forearm, live to fight another day. Let's move on. B-Bar's cold with it. Ah, the shoe shine for B-Bars. He's not playing around. Look at the punch selection here. So, bop, bop to the forehead. He'll take the forehead punch. That's going to make you break your base just a little bit. Just enough for me to go, you know what, let me, let me, let me swim under. Okay, swim under. I'm going to pop you again. Pop, pop. And now from here, I'm going to punch your glove. I mean, that's Mayweather versus, that's Mayweather versus Arturo Gotti. He's going to punch his glove. He's going to punch his glove to rip to the body. I mean, we we in we in rare territory right now for B bars, pop pop, and then of course you know he's responsible. Defense number one, your opponent's not allowed to strike. The referee's not saying nothing. He's not saying nothing off the control. So I got to control you on my exit. So let me go ahead and get control of your head. Live to fight another day. Very nice for B bars. Now B bars feel real good here. He's gonna go into a disposition feint. B bars gonna go into uh, he's gonna go into a disposition feint, spread his wings a little bit like an eagle, and from there he's gonna clap his gloves two times, nice disposition feint, and use that to throw a one-two downhill right around the gloves. That's very nice for B bars. Mm -mm -mm. Very nice for B bars. Very responsible. Very responsible. So here B bars gonna step in with a touch. Touch, not mind you, we just finished showing a clip where he didn't need to step in with the jab, so he didn't step in. So this that means the kid got a versatile jab. So he says, Now I need to step in. Why do I need to step in? Because my opponent's going backwards. So now I can step in with a one one two. Now I can step in with my jab, not automatic every single jab I throw. I step in. Okay, from there, he says, Cool, cool. You know, I just finished throwing the right hand. I gotta come back to fighting stance. Right now, he's not in fighting stance. Shoulders are square. I got to come back to fighting stance. How am I going to do that? Well, my jab. Let me reference Floyd Mayweather again. People talk about Floyd Mayweather's power work. Well, after every combination, what they come back to? Jab, jab. That brings you back to fighting stance. Anyway, b is going to get back into fighting stance. He's going to use this jab to throw an uppercut since the opponent's leaning anyway. That's great punch selection. The uppercut is one of the most dangerous punches to throw because it exposes you. So b bars is going to get his hands on his opponent's head right away. Referee not saying nothing. Great job. When he got his hands on his head, that negates, that negates, he's able to sensitivity and trap and feel the punch coming. He's able to defend against that. And then, of course, he switches over to the comes back to fighting stance, reaches out for the jab. It's not there. But, of course, he's not going to jab and bring his hand back. They say keep your hands back, but that's bad language. Instead, B-Bar is going to jab and get his hands on his opponent's head. Again, referee not saying nothing. This is amateur boxing. And B-Bars is smiling here. Why is he smiling? He says, you know, listen, control is a function of fun. When I'm not in control, I'm not having fun. And right now I'm having fun because I'm in control. So B-Bars is deep in his back. He's having fun. He's smiling. That's great stuff. Oh, my goodness. B-Bars deep in the back here once again. Oh, my goodness. One more time. Let me tell you, defense starts. Everybody thinks defense is just slipping. i got to slip and head movement. Okay, well, B-Bars says, let me go ahead and check my timing. Take your right hand away from you just in case. Check my timing. Okay, off to check my timing. I'm going to throw my jab. You're not doing nothing? Okay, cool. I'm going to be in a relaxed stance here, have my head forward, kind of want you to throw something. You're not going to commit? No problem. I'll take a step back. I'll disengage. And what I'm going to go to? Mm, hit you with a high horns package. That's going to give me time to see, think, and decide. From there, I'm going to go ahead and check my timing one more time. That allows me to see I could... Defend against this left hook, get out the way, disengage, live to fight another day. Even though I'm better than you, I'm going to go ahead and disengage, live to fight another day. I'll be back with you real soon. Woo, 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 B-Bars. Here, B-Bars, going once again, tremendous high horns package. Uh, taller than his opponent, even though his opponent is taller than him. He's taller than his opponent. That's going to allow him time to see, think, and decide. I mean, do we not get this? Of course, I failed to mention right here, I'm tripping, because B-Bars here... 
he was with the horns package early. His opponent says, you know what? I got to do something different. I'm getting my I'm getting my butt whooped here. So let me switch into southpaw. B-Bar says, oh, you're going southpaw? That's what you're doing now? You're going to go southpaw? Okay, cool. I got something for that. Let me go to a high horns package because I know southpaw is going to lead with their right hand. So I can see that jab coming a mile away. Let me go ahead and catch that. And let me go ahead and defend against the left hand you want to throw. That goes off my gloves. That's good defense. That's good defense, right? That's good decision making. Woo. B bars here once again. He's just no he's just no mercy with it. I mean, can you give the man something, anything? So here B bars is gonna start with his jab to the forehead, okay? He's gonna swim under, he's gonna jab again, okay? He's gonna go to a high horns package, very nice. That's gonna allow him to see, think, decide. He decides, you know what? Let me go ahead and defend against that right hand to the body. I don't wanna let that touch me. I'm not generous. It's not, I mean, it's not the Christmas season. We're not handing out gifts here. So let me go ahead and disengage. He disengages from that, cool. And then he, with that space that he's created, because his opponent, like I said, they got an automatic rhythm step, you know? People just be rhythm stepping just to do it. They have no language, no rhyme, no reason. Coach never told them, hey, listen, I want you to rhythm step a million times. They just want to do it automatically. So B-Bar sees that rhythm step and says, go ahead, let me, let me go ahead and try to control his glove, come in here with the right hand. That misses, but when I miss punches again, I don't know what they be talking about. They, they be telling me, oh, get your hands back. No, you get your hands back. I'm going to control you after I punch because I want to be a pro one day, and also I'm a very responsible fighter, and I respect my opponent. Defense number one is my opponent's not allowed to strike. So after I miss punch, let me get on this man's head. And I know this man wants to throw a punch, but this control allowed me to take some steam off of this punch and get my shoulder up just a little bit to let that thing deflect off my shoulder and then touch my head. Or, or even if it did touch his head, we don't even know, but that's just a great job controlling to take some steam off of that punch. Great job for B-Bars. I mean, B-Bars, once again, he said, okay, I'm going I'm to I'm let my hands go, quote, unquote. That's what they be telling the young people out there. Let your hands go. But I, you know, I'm going to let my hands go, but I'm going to do a responsible. What does responsible mean? Okay, I'm going I'm to I'm control you, okay? I'm going to control you again, okay? I'm going I'm to I'm let my hands go. I'm going to let my hands go. I'm going to put in work. I'm going to let my hands go, but let me go ahead and control you again, okay? Let me touch you. I, mean, I don't want to throw nothing too hard. I don't want to overcommit. So I'm going to just touch you, see if the punch is there. If it's not available, no problem. I'll allow Floyd Mayweather. I'm going to come back with my left hand just as, a, just as a control. Feels like I'm punching, but it's just a control to get you to clam up. While you clam up, okay, cool. I'm going to throw my right hand, but I'm, where am I throwing my right hand to? To the glove. I'm going to throw my right hand to the glove. So how many controls we done seen while he's letting his hands go? Let's count them. Let's count them for the sake of counting. Okay, we got one control, two control. Three control, four control, into the body shot. After the body shot, responsibility. What do I need to do? Right back on your gloves. You're not allowed to. We're not hook hook with a hooker. No, no, no. I punch. You're not allowed to punch. Great stuff there for him. And he goes back to the body. And then what do we see again? Another control. He's letting his hands go. I said he letting his hands go, didn't I? I said he letting his hands go. But another control there for the young man. Into the right hand, to the head. Another control for the young man again. Into the right hand. Another control one more time. Come on, young man. He's going to throw an uppercut. Uppercut, dangerous punch to throw. Leaves you open, but he's going to control before he throw that punch. He's not going to throw a blind uppercut. That don't make no sense. Even his opponent blocked it. Okay, cool. You going to smother me? Okay, cool. You going to smother me? We're not letting you work to the body. Defense number one, your opponent's not allowed to strike. Let me get my hands on your head. Let me live the fight another day. Great job. Great job for B-Bars. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, my goodness. B-Bars deep in his bag here. B-Bars deep in this bag here. So much going on. B-Bars don't care. I mean, does he even care about these guys? I mean, he's treating them very poorly. He's treating these guys very poorly. Here we go. So B-Bars here on his approach. He on, he's on his approach. Check his timing. Okay, high horns position on the, for, on the forehead this time. What are you going to hit him with next? He's going to go into a little Tyson Fury package. He said, let me foot faint you. Mm, let, me, let me go ahead and foot faint you one time. High horns foot faint. Uh, now, what is it? Upon? Now, uh, again, people, oh, can, I, can I rhythm step out of range? Get back, Coach Barry. I can rhythm step out of range. You're tripping. You're crazy, Barry. Okay, cool. Very nice. Good for you. Do your thing, brother. Now, uh, B-Bars here, he's going to go to a high horns package. He's going to foot faint him. That's going to force his opponent to go into an automatic rhythm step out of range um, that he has as a habit, okay? From there, B-Bars says, cool. Okay, that's nice. 
That gives me time. I know after you rhythm step, you want to punch. You definitely going to want to punch. So that gives me time to go to a high horns package, and you're going to be hitting nothing but glove. I should be able to take away the jab and the right hand. Those are simple punches every gym teaches. So I, I didn't took away the hook. I took away your jab. I should be able to take away the right hand. Those, I mean, those are basic punches. So, you know, how does B-Bar do that? Oh, he says, okay, you know what? Let me go high horns here. Foot faint. Catch the right hand. Very nice, very simple stuff. He says, now you need to disengage because you feel like all types of pressure on you. Why do you feel like all types of pressure on you? Because when you do this right hand, you, you didn't do nothing with it. So now you feel like you have to move. Okay, now you feel like you have to move. You start moving to your right. I say, cool, I'm going to just go into a gallop, the footwork drill gallop. I'm not going to spaz out like even some professionals do running up to you all rugged and crazy. I'm just gallop to you. Just that's a basic boxing drill, galloping. Okay, when I gallop to you, you're going to feel all types of pressure. Now, the pressure started from here. The pressure started from here. I walked to you one more time in a high horns position, foot fainted you, you rhythm stepped. I took away your right hand off of that. Okay, that forced you to move to your right. When you move to your right, I gallop to you. That forced you to move to your left. When you move to the left, I said, okay, cool. I got you where I want now. I'm going to start with my jab, okay? I'm going to walk to you now. I'm going to go high horns. I'm going to you know, check my timing in case you think about throwing the right hand. I got to check my timing. Take that away from you. Now you don't throw defense number one. Your opponent's not allowed to strike. Okay. And now from here, I'm going a, I'm to a sit down because now I'm forcing you to punch. I forced you to punch here. I forced the right hand out of you. I forced the right hand out of you. Okay. Now I'm going to force the hook out of you. I could defend against that. Not only am I going to defend against the hook, but I'm going to take your right hand away even if you thought about throwing it. How am I going to do that? After I roll under the hook, I'm going to check my timing. Oh, my goodness. This is redundant. This is redundant. Anyway, so he goes ahead and check his timing. Okay, his opponent is under so much pressure. He's not landing nothing. He decides to go over to the right. Oh, what does B-Bars do again? He gallops to him. He gallops to him. That's just very nice. I mean, that's just very nice. Anyway, let me let's continue. So here to finish the sequence, I believe, if I'm not mistaken here. Listen to the pace of play here. Listen to the pace of play here. Listen to the pace of play. I'm just just pace of play really quick. Pop 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 pop. Oh my goodness. So pace of play is tremendous here. So B bars, he steps in here with the one two. Okay, control him. You can't really see it, but he controls him. Okay. Now he's gonna throw the three uppercuts to the head, okay? One, two, three, and then look to control, right hand referee didn't say anything, by the way, any control that happened, there's been no break, no stoppage in action. We don't know what these people be talking about. But let, let's watch that whole sequence again as best we can. So B bars, pop, 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 pop. Referee's gotta stop that thing, fight's over. Referee says, listen, you're not going to be in this fight. You're getting outclassed. We got to wrap this thing up. 